In this video, we are creating Ash's ultimate team in Pokemon. I'm gonna be looking at all of Ash's Pokemon and picking out which ones that have the best potential for Ash's ultimate team. I will be creating a full squad of six Pokemon, each having good enough strength and capability to work together as a group. Now, if you're wondering why I want to create the ultimate team for Ash, we have to go back to the newest anime series known as Pokemon Journeys. In this series, we of course follow Ash's dream to becoming a Pokemon master, however, Ash is challenged by the idea of taking on the world monarch, also known as Leon, the current champion of the world. For Ash to defeat Leon, he needs to have a really good team, but not just any team, the ultimate team. Let's start with Ash's original squad from the beloved Kanto region. Ash owned 12 Pokemon while traveling through Kanto and Orange Islands. While he did catch 30 Tauros, I'm only gonna say that he caught one because he only used one of his Tauros anyway. Now I will have to choose which Pokemon are the strongest from this region, so let's pick out the best members of the group. To determine which of Ash's Pokemon are the strongest, we are going to have to look at their win record and the overall strength of that Pokemon. Like if they've defeated very strong Pokemon in Charizard's case when it defeated Articuno, then that would give them a big advantage over Pokemon that have only faced weaker Mons with a higher win ratio. I think for Kanto, we obviously need to keep Pikachu on the team, because it's Pikachu. I mean, what else can you really say? Say. Pikachu has a consistent 60% win ratio with the highest number of battles, and it has even taken down a Latios with full HP. So I think it's safe to say Pikachu can stay on the ultimate team. We are also saving Charizard because of the reason I just mentioned, and his win rate in Pokemon is a high 69%. That's pretty nice. I'm also saving Snorlax because of its 73% win rate, only losing 3 battles. Lastly, I choose Kingler again for the 71% win rate, and despite the few battles it had, Kingler only lost two battles. The rest of Ash's Kanto team won't be saved because they either had a negative win ratio or didn't battle enough. Moving on to Ash's Johto team. I'm only saving Heracross and Donphan because both of them had a 50% win rate. His other Pokemon weren't on par with them in my opinion. Like for example, Noctowl had a better win rate, but it lacked the experience that Heracross and Donphan had. Advanced didn't have too much Pokemon to choose from, although I was really really impressed with Sceptile's performance throughout the series as well as the Sinnoh League when it wiped out Darkrai. In addition, I'll throw in Swellow for the rather good win ratio of 60% and it's a decent Pokemon. All of the Diamond and Pearl team members were pretty damn strong so it wasn't the easiest when it came to choosing the strongest Pokemon in the squad. Either way, I think the Pokemon that deserve to be kept are Infernape, Gliscor, and Staraptor. Gibble on the other hand had a really good win ratio but I think in terms of raw power it might not be the best Pokemon considering it's only on the first stage. Infernape, Gliscor, and Staraptor I think are the most powerful and worthy Pokemon to be on Ash's ultimate team. The Black and White series gave me a ton of options to choose between, but nothing quite matches the sheer strength of Crocodile. The only ones to come close to Crocodile are Lovani and Pignite, except for their win ratio, which is only slightly higher than 50%, while Crocodile's win ratio is in the 75 percentile. Onto the infamous XY series. This series gave us a very good group of mons to pick from, so I'm just gonna go right ahead and keep Greninja because it's Greninja. What much can be said? Alright, fine. If you don't like Greninja, that's cool. But how can you explain the 80% win rate? That's- it's insane, okay? It's insane. So now that we kept Greninja, who else shall we save? Well, I'll tell you what, it's definitely not Noivern. Sorry, I actually really like Noivern, it's just Kalos League did it dirty in pretty much all of XY to be fair. I think it's time to get rid of Talonflame and Halucha, although strong Pokemon, I don't believe they are capable of the ultimate team for Ash. Last, but probably least, performance wise, is yours truly Gudra. I was actually very, very tempted to keep this. You know what? Let's just save Gudra anyway, because I feel like it's such a strong Pokemon in general. It just had a few bad days in the Kalos League. The victorious Sun and Moon gang has arrived, and I'm saving Lycanroc, Naganadal, Incineroar, and Melmetal. Pretty much his entire Alolan team. Sorry, Rowlet. I mean, God. Why am I saving these Pokemon? Well, it's because they're good. 
All of them have won most of their battles anyway, so why not save them on the list? Last, but surely not least, are the Journeys Bros. I swear to god, ever since XY, Ash has been catching some good Pokemon, but I'm only saving Dragonite and Lucario. Please don't get mad at me, I really like Surfitch, Dracovish, and Gengar. I'm just not gonna save them because one, we barely saw Dracovish and Gengar battle, although I can tell they are pretty damn strong. Two, in my opinion, Surfitch isn't as powerful as Dragonite and Lucario. Dragonite's the clutch master and Lucario is the ultimate plot armor. I mean, seriously, Lucario is powerful. He might even get access to Mega Evolution in the future, which will make him even more powerful. Now the hard part. Time to create the ultimate Ash team. I'm actually creating the team following the Pokemon anime logic, not the game logic because I don't have much knowledge in that area. Looking at the Pokemon I saved for Kanto, I think we have to save Pikachu. I mean, Ash isn't Ash without Pikachu, just like Pokemon isn't Pokemon without Gudra. Even if Pikachu may not be the toughest Pokemon, it still has a win ratio of 60% with the most amount of battles ever. Those analytics alone tell you Pikachu is no joke. So we can surely say Pikachu is on Ash's ultimate team. For his other Pokemon, I think Charizard would be a perfect pick as well, because not only is the win record on this dude pretty high, but he managed to take down Blaine's Magmar, Gary's Blastoise, and Nolan's Articuno, plus a whole bunch of other trainers. Charizard has also previously been on Ash's team for a very long time, so at this point, they have a fairly powerful bond. If that doesn't solidify his spot on the team, I don't know what does. The rest of Ash's Pokemon he owned in Kanto aren't quite on the same level as Pikachu and Charizard in my opinion. In Johto, I actually won't be keeping any of the Pokemon I save since I think there are better mons out there Ash owns. Advanced, I am choosing Sceptile for the sniper of Ash's team. Sceptile's record isn't the best when it comes down to percentage, however it has defeated Darkrai with the help of a few others, thus having the nickname Sniper for his team. I think Sceptile's strength is to clean up the remains of someone's Pokemon rather than than brute force. It's quick and agile which can make it effective if done correctly like against Darkrai. In general, Sceptile is a super powerful Pokemon that will be useful in almost any scenario, especially in the one I just mentioned. In Diamond and Pearl, you already know we have to go with Infernape, it's not even a question. Infernape arguably has the best story of any other Pokemon Ash owns, but just like Sceptile, there's a bigger purpose of Infernape being here. Infernape's real power comes from its ability Blaze that allows an extra flame to the fire. I know that doesn't really make sense, but whatever, you know what I meant. Blaze kicks up the fire type moves, so for Infernape, he's got the tactical advantage. We know that Infernape is up here, but will I add any other Pokemon from DP to the list? No, no, not really. I like Gliscor and Saraptor, but other powerhouses are coming up. For black and white, we only have one entry, and that one entry was very close to joining the team. Again, I have another Pokemon that has taken Crocodile's spot for now, but that could change depending on how well that Pokemon will do in the future. So sorry to all you Crocodile fans, I've let you down, now forgive me by giving this video a like. XY without a doubt, Gudra, come here buddy! <laughs> hey hey, hold that dislike, you seriously thought I would put Gudra instead of Greninja? <laughs> of course I would not. Right? Alright, I just checked the script. Anyways, Greninja, Gekuga, Koga, whatever you want to call it, is of course joining the squad. I mean, how could it not? Greninja's record is 80% plus that battle bond ability it has with Ash. You can't make an ultimate team list without Greninja in it. It's not even possible. Sorry, Sun and Moon fans. I also happen not to choose any Pokemon from here either. I will say though, Lycanroc and Naginato almost made it in. But I think their roles get outshined by Sceptile in my opinion. Now it's the pinnacle moment of Dragonite or Lucario. Who will take the final place on the team? Well, I'll tell you what. It's not Lucario, that's for sure. God, I've just made thousands of people upset, haven't I? Okay, yes. It's the ultimate clutch master himself, at least the moment of recording this. Dragonite has wiped out a champion's ace Pokemon, that being Iris's Haxorus, and defeated two Pokemon from a gym leader like Mega Lucario, all while taking immense damage. If you ask me, that's a pretty powerful Pokemon. 
Hopefully it continues this way, but if for whatever reason Dragonite starts sucking Pokeballs, then we can throw in Crocodile so I don't get destroyed in the comments from the future. If you are from the future and this does change, then feel free to hate all you want. I'm just a beta from the past.